Hi, my name is Kaya Gray. I love working with children, especially the K through eight age range. It's right when they're starting to figure out what their passion is, and I think exploring things in a very tactile manner with things like Legos are just a really great tool for them to foster creativity and build confidence in STEM concepts. I myself have always been a woman of STEM. I love science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, especially the mathematics and statistics. Today, I'll be talking about what I would do if I had 10,000 ping pong balls. I have managed to acquire 10, which I can work with sample sizes as a statistician, and I've constructed this probability plinko out of cardboard and chopsticks and a little bit of hot glue and some painter's tape. So this looks like a simple game. You drop a ball in and it follows a path and falls in a slot, but there is an astounding amount of probability going on here, which is the cool part. Each time the ball drops and lands on a prong, it has to choose either right or left. And when you're doing an experiment that only has two outcomes, that's actually called a Bernoulli trial. So examples of Bernoulli trials are flipping a coin. It can either be heads or tails. When you do a repeated number of Bernoulli trials, as you can see, the ball follows a path and has to choose right or left many times, you're actually performing a binomial experiment. As you can see on my t-shirt, this is called Pascal's triangle, and these are the coefficients to predict probability of the binomial experiment, um, which is also a, a whole other video. But the cool thing is, if I had 10,000 ping pong balls, my credibility would be much larger than just 10. So the law of large numbers says that when you repeat a Bernoulli trial into a binomial experiment, when you repeat it a large number of times, your outcome is more credible. So you can think about the simplest form is when you flip a coin 10 times. It's possible that it'll land on heads 10 times in a row, but it's very rare. And so if you were to just flip it 10 times and it landed on heads every time, you might think, oh, either, hey, this coin is biased, which as a statistician, I would say that would be likely. But if you repeat that flipping the coin 10 times a thousand times, you'll see that through the law of large numbers, you're more likely to have a well-rounded idea of how the coin will behave. And just having our own sense of flipping coins, we know it's about 50-50. 50% heads, 50% tails. So assuming that my Plinko is unbiased and the ball is likely to go right or left with the same probability, if this Plinko board was a thousand times bigger, it would be much more credible. And the cool thing is, when you have repeated Bernoulli trials, which form a binomial experiment, and you sample it enough times, it actually forms a normal distribution, which is this bell curve. And you can see that most of the balls are landing in the middle, but some are landing on the end. I can just imagine this probability Planko taking up like the whole wall and having 10,000 ping pong balls to drop in it would just be an astounding experiment and a great way to teach people probability because it's fun, it's a game, and also it's very satisfying to drop the balls. But thank you for watching this video. 